Drinking me some infused like water this time, and I always do infused water. So I don't know why I hesitated. Are oh, you like my cup? Yes. So I just got some lemon ginger this time. I boiled it in some good distilled water, and just trying to like push out toxins to bring in the new, you know, new birthday vibes. How are you feeling over there? Looking all spring and bright yellow. I'm doing good, girl. I'm feeling good. I got my salad ready for me to eat my little lunch. So I've been doing good on the little workout. So we've been doing that. I love it. I love it. I've been working out three times a week, like I told you guys in the Vibe Squad last week. Um, so I've been sticking to that. Um, thanks to you guys. Keep me on track and accountable. But I'm I'm liking it, you know. I'm giving y'all a little body right now. You know what I'm saying? A little bit full body. Right? Body, yaddy, yaddy. You know, but yeah, so yeah, what we got today, because it's birthday weeks, we got birthday vibes, I know we got some very intense topics, you know, as we should. Our viewers wanted to hear it, so we had to bring it up, so let's Let's talk about it, let's jump into these topics. All right. So the first one I want us to talk about, and again, this was suggested by one of our viewers, so shout out to you. And please keep them coming. Let us know in the comment section if you want to reach out to us directly, whatever it may be. Just let us know what y'all want to hear. So our first topic is how often does the normal woman in general that we can speak to, okay, how often does she want to have sex? Mm, so this is going to be a very different topic because we're going to come from two different perspectives. We're yeah. going to come from married life perspective, which I assume is a little bit different. Maybe we're going to figure it out. Yeah. And a single ladies perspective. So I'm going to let you carry on and then I'm going to jump in after. Okay, jump in then. So I think for me as a single woman, you know, it gets a little, you know, up and down. I feel like it's not as consistent as I ideally would like it to be. Okay. You know, personally, I would want something more consistent. But granted, that's one of the pitfalls of being single. And if you're dating, you're not exclusive. You know, of course, women are going to do what they want to do as far as how they feel liberated, sexually, how they want to express themselves. Um, For me, ideally, I say like once a day, personally. Okay. Once a day. day. Okay. Yeah, once a day. And then, okay, say it's not once a day. Maybe it's like two or three times out of the four days, you know, that we do engage. If it's seven days in a week, say we do it a few times per day out of that week. Okay. But I think, you know, realistically, once a month, not once a month, but once a week. <laughs> too far. Once a month is where it's at, but whatever. <laughs> right. So okay. realistically, what do you think? Like from a married woman's perspective, because I think that gives a lot of insight because, you know, we are on different spectrums right now. Okay. Um, I guess it's, uh, it all depends on what's going on, um, Mm. with your household. So it definitely varies based on the condition of your household. So if one person is overly stressed out, then it's going to be probably a drought until that person gets out of that stress. That's why it's important Mm. to figure out a good significant other. So when you're going through the different droughts in your life, because the life is dynamic, so different things are happening, you have that significant other that's going to get you out of that. So say, for instance, your significant other is stressed out, then you're probably not going to have none for a month or two, you know what I'm saying? Unless you have that skill set to get them out of that, you know, you know, that that stressful time. It really does. Like you can't, some people are like that. I do have uh, some, I know someone that can just, you know, have sex whenever, no matter if they, if they hit her and her significant other even argue, they can just get it in, whatever. There's some people that are emotionally tied when it mm-hmm. comes to, you know, making love and stuff like that. I'm that type of person. Like if I'm not vibing with you and we're not cool, you ain't coming nowhere near me. Okay. And it's the drools. You know what I'm saying? So I'm more emotionally tied to it. And then some people just get it in to get it in. So mm-hmm. the question at hand, before I go into the nitty gritty of different things, trying to avoid the question. Oh, was about every week or every month? Week. We said week. How often throughout the week? Two. Twice? Twice. So two days out of seven? You got kids, we everybody going to work, people tired. We talking about two. Okay. Talking about two. A solid two or like two. 
Okay. It, it even too. I'm just gonna let. I'm, I'm, a, I'm not trying to scare nobody here in terms of marriage. Okay, get married. Uh, but, get married. Uh, get married. However, yeah, it definitely does reduce a lot. Um, I've heard that. Yeah, especially when you're like doing so many things, mm-hmm. opening businesses, doing going to school, taking care of the kids, whatever, and you're just tired. Mm-hmm. You know, people laid out, people pushing people off the bed, like get out of here, like what's going <laughs> on, like so you got a baby right there between y'all two. So it definitely, you know, it gets a little bit difficult, but you can make out time. You can, but I'm saying I'm gonna say good too. I think that's very realistic, and I think that's what our viewers want to hear. Like, what is the real on the streets? What's currently going on for our demographic, married or single? What does that look like? And again, of course, we like you said, there's different factors that play a part. You know, different people have different ways of, you know, being intimate or not, you know, whatever it may be, based on how comfortable you feel. Like, maybe it's just like a quick hit, hit, pass or whatever and get it done. Or like you said, you want to make love. Like you want to feel that connection. If we're going to do it, we're going to do it right. Some people are like, I just want to get it done. Right. So it really depends on where you're at. So viewers, if you're comfortable, let us know what you think is realistic. I truly feel four times a week would be ideal or every day. So are you emotionally attached? Say you're married and all that stuff, or you have a a, a boyfriend as you know, y'all stable. Um, are you like emotionally tied to making love or having sex or you're like, let's get it done. We got, we got to get this four out of seven. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we got to get these tallies ran up. Uh, um, it depends on what the issue is. Okay. Like if we're beefing about something small, I don't think that's going to impact the sex drive. I don't, but okay. if it's something big where it's like, Oh, he's really mad at me, but I don't, this is all theoretical because I guess, I haven't been in like a real solid exclusive relationship where I could really speak to this in a while. So it's okay. been very spotty. We'll say okay. that it's been very spotty. Um, but I think once I am in an exclusive relationship, I do believe sexual compatibility is very important. Okay. So I want my man to still kind of try if I'm mad. <laughs> okay. That's yeah. how I feel. That's, I mean, yeah. that's where I'm at now. I want him to still kind of try cause I'll probably give him. Okay, but what if you don't try? Are you the type to try? Will you initiate it? Mm, maybe indirectly. I'm In- definitely not the type to like jump on my okay. like. <laughs> I mean, I might like nudge or you know do some little cute stuff to let it be known. Or I mean, it depends. The girl it depends on what night it is. It depends on what's going on. I'll be like, drop it and give me <laughs> give me fifty. Drop it and give me fifty quick. Okay. <laughs> You are on a on a great pathway because yeah, sometimes I'm gonna speak from my situation. Yeah, you're gonna, sometimes you gotta be like, drop it, give me fifty. Drop it, give me fifty. Like, I love it. Then we're like, oh, drop it, give me fifty. Like it gets <laughs> sometimes it gets aggressive. Like so, you know, it, but that's all about spicing it up sometimes because yes. you can't be like Hulu granny panties and all this stuff. Sometimes it's like you got to be spontaneous and you got to, you know, kind of spice it up and show them like, you know, let them remember when you weren't four kids in and 50 pounds heavier and, you know, when you was, you know, 10 years younger. So you got to spice it up, you know, because sometimes, you know, it gets stale, you're busy, you're doing things, you got milk in this hand and all that. But sometimes mm-hmm. the spontaneousness is what also keeps the relationship going too. So don't always let them know your moves. So sometimes you walk in there with your drill search sergeant hat on, but like, yeah. drop it, give me 50. Okay. No. Yes, it's real. <laughs> yes. I so. like that. That's really good advice, I feel. Well, it's really good insight. We'll say that. Yeah. Because I do think as women, there's nothing wrong with letting it be known what we want and what we need. Fact. You have to wait for the man to initiate. You know what no. I'm saying? Um, and I think like what you're saying, you know, sometimes it's like, it's been a long day for me too. Maybe I want some like spice. Maybe I want to, you know, tune into our sexual side and get it going or whatever. Like, right. why not? you know, we have all these different things going on and maybe I'm just in the booth right now. Right. But then also, like, what is your, have you ever thought about what is your love language? Like, we yeah. know, we're talking about sex, we're talking about that, that's all fine and dandy, but what is your, like, day-to-day love language? What is a ideal language to you that shows that that significant other loves you? And, you know, that's a really 
it's kind of hard to speak to just one because honestly, I want them all. But I think different times in my life, one has become heavier than the other. Right. So one holds more weight. So right now, I really like acts of service. Okay. I like somebody that's going to go get my car washed and get the oil changed. You know, I want somebody that's going to bring me groceries and then I can cook. Or, that's you know, right. give me some extra money. Like, I want acts of service. I want you to do certain things for me. So mm-hmm. it makes my life easier, especially because, you know, running businesses, having multiple jobs, you know, hanging with friends and all this, trying to stay in shape. Like, sometimes you just want some convenience of the normal things that you would have to take care of on your own. That's so right. I think active service is really where I'm at right now. And I also like quality time, but the time mm-hmm. is not really there to be spent. So it's more like if we are spending time, I kind of need like a two-in-one situation. So that's why I say acts of service, like. Not saying that you have to be there to do anything like an act, but at the same time, it's still you spending your energy and investing in me. So, okay. that's a purpose. But that's a great question. What about you? Yeah, I like that what you said. Somebody that does something without you asking them. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's also a big thing for me as well. Um, don't do something because I asked you to do it. Just mm-hmm. do it. You hear me speaking to you because your significant other is the person that hears most of the things that you're talking about. So they hear your stress. I don't have to directly tell you that I need some new shoes. If I keep telling you that my feet hurts and you're looking at my shoes, just go buy me something or put some, you know, buy me something to put in my shoe or something like that. So those acts of services without me telling you exactly like, you know, what I want. However, if you need me to tell you, I will tell you a couple of times and not judge you. But after like years (laughs) down the line, if I still have to keep telling you these things and you don't initiate it, then it's something we have to talk about. Mm. Uh, you know, and you know, marriage counseling is also a good thing. You know, I'm yeah. very for it. Um, I did it a couple times, and I think it's a good thing. I, it gives you that time, that dedicated time for you and your significant other to actually speak about feelings. Because, like you said, busy running businesses, doing different things, you don't have that sometimes that time in the day just to sit there and talk about emotions. But when yeah. you go to a counselor, you have that one hour that you're paying for, or whatever, or your insurance paying for it to talk about it. So I think. Um, marriage counseling is good if the marriage sign language the marriage is the mayor like the talk you telling your significant other your language is not really getting to them like it should but okay. yeah that's um that's how i feel but then in terms of me um i'm yeah. more of a quality time i love a good quality mm-hmm. time we're just hanging out you know watching a good movie talking mm-hmm. about it or watching a good podcast talking about different topics and stuff like that i love those you know back and forth conversations and just having some popcorn or something or some crawfish with some mm-hmm. sausage slings and some crawfish dip <laughs> okay. that means flashing all over your you know clothes like that's ideal oh that's so like comforting uh, that's like your safe space like this is comforting for me you know and i know these are off topic now at this point but i will say about therapy because we advocate for it so much even if you know, you have to go by yourself at first yes. because I think those changes are healthy as well. Like whether you're married, single, in a relationship, we suggest that you get the help you need for yourself because that's going to help you be healthy in that relationship that you're in. Or if you choose not to be in a relationship, whatever floats your boat, but you just want to be the best, you know, version of who you are and work on the things that you know you need to work on. And I think right. somebody will see that. And if you are married, they may end up going with you or to Chi Chi's point, you know, just talking together about the deep feelings that you're not able to share, which kind of takes us into our next topic. Okay. What's so it, girl? Our next topic is Is it better to tell your significant other a confident lie or the hard, dirty truth? Girl, give me the truth. Give me the truth. Give me straight, straight, straight. Just give it to me because um, if I, if I'm a big trust issue. Like if I find out, you know, down the line that you lied to me, then I'm going to look at you like I can't trust you. Like just tell me the truth. Because right. I have to trust you for me to, tr- like I have to trust you for me to give you my all and not have to be on guard with you. Like I'm on guard every day of my life as I walk out the door. Mm-hmm. So I need to be able that no matter what, I know that I can turn to you and know that whether it's ugly, bad, or good, that you're going to tell me the truth because we can work through it if you tell me the truth. But if you start lying to me, oh, man, that's like, that's sneaky. That's like a snake, mm-hmm. and I can't do it. Uh, right. It's like, where's your loyalty, loyalty and honesty? And, you know, there's this saying, and it's very controversial. So okay. what do you think about the saying that, like, a man will lie to the woman they love but tell the truth to the woman on the side or something like that? 
I hate that narrative. So I'm just going to jump in. I literally hate that narrative. That Mm. needs to be dead and buried. Like, I do not like it because that's not fair. And I know that a lot of times when men put themselves in that situation, apparently they do tell the side chick. A lot of times the side chick knows more than the wife because they're trying to guard the wife. But I do feel like in a healthy situation, I agree with you. Like, give me the truth. Don't paint no pretty picture of a lie and a fairy tale. Because once I find out, and I know it's not going to sit well, because at the same time, you can feel like if you know that person, you kind of know somebody's lying to you. Right. And even if you don't know right away, it's just some type of intuition. You're like, hmm. Mm. that's not really sitting well with me right but okay i'm gonna let you run with it and then when you find out that it was a lie it's like why would you even do that because you're insulting my intelligence then you're betraying our trust that's right and it's like you're supposed to be my friend like i don't want my friends or family or anyone close to me lying to me even if it's the hard truth and they put in a situation to look crazy out there because Mm -hmm. if i'm sitting here saying x y and z on my person my person at a hundred percent he don't cheat on my person 100 percent at work and you 100 percent not at work then you making me look stupid so i'm that stupid girl now so Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. you're not protecting me at all so no i mean but i get what they they, they don't want to tell the wife the the truth because they love that wife they're trying to protect their emotions but no no Mm -hmm. not a strong wife you first of all don't do something that's don't do something that's negative. We talked about that in one of our episodes, self-inflicting pain. Don't yeah. do something that's going to hurt that person. First of all, we could just start there. If you start there, you're preventing any other unnecessary trauma. Mm-hmm. So don't do anything self-inflicting to yourself or your significant other that you love so much. And we're all good. We don't got no problems. I agree, girl. I 100% agree. And not to get off topic too much, but I've been reading about love and things like that in the Bible and what love's supposed to reflect. And one of the things that I feel is um, under discussed or analyzed is the fact that love will not dishonor. Mm. So if that person dishonors you, then they don't love you. Mm-hmm. Or they don't love themselves. I'm not sure. I haven't gotten to the nitty gritty of it, but okay. that part stood out to me because it says love does not dishonor. Mm-hmm. So if you're lying to me, if you're cheating on me, and you are trying to manipulate me to get what you want, that's dishonoring me. And you don't yeah. love me. So don't out y'all out there on the streets and stuff like that. If a man is dishonoring you in any way and then comes back and says he loves you, he doesn't love you. Sorry, sis, bro. He they do not love you if they're willing to dishonor you in any shape or fashion. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And I'm sticking beside it. Yes, girl. I'm saying true because no, because I know when I walk out the door, I'm not doing anything to dishonor no one that I love. So I know that that same energy should be come, coming right around the corner to me. And if you can't do it, you don't love me. And it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. No beef. But we're not going to be cool like that. We ain't going to be together for sure. Because mm-hmm. I ain't going to be, I'm, I'm, now I'm crunk. I'm crunk. <laughs> Uh, I'm in the house, sleep with my eyes closed, and I can't, I can't trust you. So no, we're not gonna be together. Period. Right, girl. I feel you. So let us know what y'all think, viewers, because everybody wants to like throw out, oh well, he loves me or she loves me, and this is what it is. But a lot of times, I think people are being bamboozled because I do really feel like maybe that person just doesn't know how to show that they love you. I don't know the recipe, but I do feel like if that person's willing to dishonor you and lie to you in your face blatantly, give you a confident lie, they are not to be trusted. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's deep, girl. It got it got deep a little bit because like it really resonated with me and I had to reflect on some of the situations I had been in and people saying they love me, but it's like at the same time you're dishonoring me. Right. You know? So you really, at the end of the day, I can't believe your words. I can only believe your actions. That's true. So we speaking about religion now. So that's going to get us to our last topic. Um, How do you feel about if you're, if someone you're dating or potentially suitor has a different religion than you, if it doesn't match, is that a deal breaker for you? Or, you know, is that okay? So if you're Christian and the other person is atheist, um, is that a deal breaker for you? They have all the other check marks, but they don't believe in God. They believe maybe in science or things like that. Um, what is your take on that? Yeah, and I want to hear your take as well from a marriage okay. standpoint, because obviously you have to go through those checks and balances. But mm-hmm. for me, if they are an atheist or agnostic, 
it is a deal breaker for me. Okay. Because I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in God. I believe in the Holy Spirit. That is within me. And that's what I trust and believe in. So if you are not sure, that doesn't mean we can't be friends. I'm definitely not saying that we can't be friends. But at the same time, I want you to have some spiritual um, backings. Mm -hmm. I want you to be confident in your faith. Because if we're raising children, so the thing is for me, I want you to believe in Jesus. I want you to believe in God. I want you to believe in the Holy Spirit. If you are not like actively, and I say this very lightly, if you're not actively going to church, because you know me, I go to church. Yes, you do. So if you're not going to church, but you are still trying to build your relationship in some capacity, like whether it's reading the Bible, you pray, you maybe just don't go every Sunday, Mm -hmm. I'm going to be a little bit more lenient than somebody that just doesn't believe at all and feels there's no reason to go. Now, when it comes to like other religions outside of Christianity, um, even other, I guess, sex, sex or whatever, Um, denominations, I'm not sure the proper term, but like Pentecostal, Catholic, those are all forms of Christianity. Mm -hmm. Even then it would be not saying impossible, but I feel for us to really have a concrete marriage, conversion would have to take place. Mm -hmm. And it would not be a forced situation. I would not want you to convert from like Pentecostal or um, Catholic Catholicism or whatever for me. But it will be something that I want us to share together and be able to build and nurture and grow. Because I think that is a lot of times when you have um, a faith-based relationship, you can always go to that when things get hard. Right. Like, I, I've seen it work where, you know, people just think because you're both Christian or whatever, doesn't mean the relationship's going to work. I'm not saying that. Mm-hmm. But I do think with all the issues in the world, I don't want to add that additional issue into my union personally yeah no that's very insightful and i kind of knew that's how you answer it Mm because i know you're very grounded when it comes to um your religion and no matter what you do that saturday you at church on a sunday okay so um yeah so i definitely knew that she was going to come at that angle um and in terms for me um so when i'm married my husband is catholic um, mm-hmm. So I'm definitely fine with that because, you know, my mom also was Catholic prior to marriage as well. Um, so I'm Christian, I'm Christian, whatever. My husband's Catholic. I haven't fully converted or anything like that, but we do go to the Catholic churches. You know, mm-hmm. when we do, we don't go every Sunday because, hell, I work every Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's been a struggle going to church. But I was grounded on the um, the the knowledge that you don't have to go to church every day to have a strong uh, relationship with God. So that's how I live. My, I'm very, very connected with my God. Um, mm-hmm. So that's my belief in terms of church. Um, and second, in terms of if they don't believe in, in God at all, I think that would be hard for me as well. Um, mm-hmm. Simply because I did have an associate and maybe we didn't even go far because she was atheist and she mm-hmm. didn't believe in God. So sometimes when she would tell me some of the struggles she's going through, I'll say, I'm going to pray for you, you know what I'm saying, uh, and things like that. I'll say something about God all the time, and then she'd be like, well, thank you, but I don't believe in God. So it's kind of been hard for me to communicate on my normal, you know, unfiltered communication because I do talk about God a lot. Um, mm-hmm. So it's kind of hard for us to even build. I'm not saying that our relationship didn't grow because of our religion, um, mm-hmm. but it was hard because I had to really, you know, monitor what I say, especially when it comes to God, but I didn't monitor it, <laughs> but I, I, I was trying not to hurt her feelings. If it was hurting her feelings, I don't know. I didn't cater to cater to it that much, mm-hmm. but, um, I don't, if you don't believe in God, I don't think we're going to be married. Mm-hmm. Um, not because I'm a non judgment type of person. I don't judge you, but it will probably be hard for us mm-hmm. to talk because I don't want to be throwing God on you. If you don't believe in God, but I will be throwing it because that's what I believe in. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, the, I, the conflict, the dilemma is there for sure. And so I think like we're both saying it will make it a little bit harder to engage with that person and to relate to that person and for that person to relate to you. If it's completely different, you know, if it's literally the reverse, it's not saying that it can't be done, but it's going to make it very challenging because A person that does believe in a higher power versus somebody that does not, their mindset is going to be different. The way they conduct themselves, the things they say is going to be different. Like, and we're all different anyways, but I just think like when in a significant relationship and even you brought up a friendship relationship that Mm -hmm. or associate relationship that really couldn't fully develop because of that, you know? And I think that's a tall tale sign right there that it would be a little bit harder because again, you're not, you're not like, 
I'm not saying you have to be like-minded, but you're not really equally on that same playing field where you can have those discussions. And so I don't think it's anything wrong with having people, acquaintances, associates, all those things where y'all aren't of the same religious background or the re same religion. You can learn so much from so many different people. But right. when it comes to like a union where you're supposed to be one person, if that's what you believe as far as marriage mm -hmm. goes, that's what we believe, you're bringing two together, then it's kind of hard to bring a unbeliever and a believer yeah um back it, what do y'all think yeah what do y'all think yes exactly comment below please let's talk about it we love all the topics and to the um the viewer that sent those comments in thank you thank you thank you these are all so so great and speaking about the viewers we kind of mentioned it um last video we're gonna have our first viewer come speak with us um we're gonna talk about a lot of good different things we're definitely gonna talk about the hot topic you know what I'm saying just get a, a viewer perspective on some of the hot topics we talk about and mm -hmm. then we're gonna talk about balance because you know that's kind of a revolving theme on our show with balance self-care so we're gonna see how one of our viewers how do they balance stress so that's going to be something we're going to drop next week so definitely stay tuned for that um but it's been a pleasure thank y'all for tuning in with us every saturday at 12 o'clock it's been a pleasure our channel's growing please drop a lot i want to hear from you yes vibing out bye